Before we begin Unit 13, here is the answer to the Unit 12 question. The best answer is choice B. Natural selection refers to individuals of a species possessing certain traits that make them more likely to survive and reproduce under a particular set of environmental conditions. The random mutations that allow for natural selection occur by chance. As a result, species cannot control when or if an advantageous mutation will occur that might result in adaptations to changing environmental conditions. The characteristics of the environment determine what organisms may live in a particular biome. Unit 13, the fate of biodiversity. As mentioned in an earlier unit, there is a natural level of extinction referred to as the background extinction rate that will occur with or without human interference. There have also been five mass extinctions that are defined as the extinction of many species in a relatively short period of geologic time. These naturally occurring mass extinctions have been caused by global changes in environmental conditions. Large-scale catastrophes such as volcanic eruptions and collisions with asteroids are thought to have brought about such changes. However, it doesn't take an advanced degree in environmental science to make the correlation between human activities and today's ever-rising rate of species extinction. Scientists are now calling this era the beginning of the Earth's sixth mass extinction, and it's the first time that such an event is being caused by one species. How exactly are we doing this? It's not like anyone ever sat down and said, hey, let's see how quickly we can eradicate the planet of as many species as possible. However, people certainly didn't consider the eventual consequences associated with their growth mentality. Let's take a look at a few examples of human activity and the impacts on ecosystems will become very clear. Take a look at any town, city, or housing complex and then try to imagine what the area must have looked like before the construction began. You now have a vision in your mind of what is referred to as habitat destruction. A species habitat can be thought of as its home. Basically, by developing land for our own purposes, we destroy the homes of the species that existed in those areas. Without their homes, these species obviously cannot survive. You've probably heard that European settlers brought with them diseases that quickly spread throughout the Native American population. These disease-causing organisms are examples of invasive species or organisms that are introduced to an ecosystem without having been part of the natural evolutionary process. There is no way to know what the effect of such an organism will have on its new environment. Through their selfish activities, humans are constantly introducing invasive species into ecosystems, providing these invaders with the opportunities they otherwise would not have had. We'll examine population growth and resource consumption in depth later in this program. However, we must consider their impact when we analyze how humans are increasing extinction rates. Thanks to our technology, we are the only species on Earth capable of exceeding its own carrying capacity, or the maximum population that an ecosystem can support. As a result, every day there are more and more people on the planet. This leads to the need for more and more space and resources, commodities that were once allocated to other species. Similar to destroying their homes, as we take away the resources that other species need to survive, they eventually are eliminated from an area. Scientific evidence has concluded that human activities are also affecting the world's climate. As you have learned, species have evolved in response to the climates associated with their respective biomes. As human activities such as the burning of fossil fuels and clear-cutting vast areas of forest for land usage aim to benefit only our species continue, we are altering the predominant temperature and rain patterns associated with specific areas of the planet. As this accelerated climate change occurs, organisms are unable to adapt to their new environmental conditions and being eliminated from their habitats. You may have heard about the unprecedented 2019 Australian bushfires that were exacerbated by human-induced climate change. Only time will tell if Australia's wildlife, and the country itself, will ever be able to fully recover. One final example of human activity that affects ecosystems is over-exploitation, the practice of taking more of a resource than is needed. Most people are familiar with the fact that the American buffalo was pushed to the brink of extinction by overexploitation. Other examples include certain mining practices, overfishing of the oceans, and poaching, the illegal capturing of wild animals for profit. It's not difficult to find other glaring examples, and they always seem to involve ways of making the maximum amount of profit. The fate of biodiversity is in our hands. Unfortunately, human beings have not had a positive effect on the planet's ecosystems. 
Ironically, but equally horrifying, is the fact that this behavior is completely irrational, because the very survival of our species depends on the natural capital that a strong biodiversity provides. Obviously, we must begin to live in a more sustainable manner, and this can be accomplished. We know this because you are becoming eco-literate. Take a moment to think about how many students you're able to influence, now and in the future. Imagine every K-12 teacher infusing environmental education into their instruction and the influence that that will have on society. Yes, the fate of biodiversity is in our hands, and maybe that's a good thing. Here's your question for Unit 13. Which of the following is not a human activity contributing to loss of biodiversity? Choice A, land development. Choice B, introduction of invasive species. Choice C, overexploitation of resources. Or choice D, climate change. The answer and explanation are provided at the beginning of Unit 14.